Welcome back, folks. This is a short little presentation on keys to the daily bias in the Forex market. All right, so we are looking at a crude depiction of a open high-low close bar. And this is a, it's a generic little pattern that I use to teach my power three. And basically power three is accumulation, manipulation, and distribution, and how that is presented in a daily range. Now this formation is not specific to only a daily chart. It's every time frame. So the things that I'm teaching you here, don't think just in terms of the daily range because you can use it as a session range. Okay, the, the same premise that I'm gonna be referring to here can be applied to just what occurs between two o'clock in the morning and five o'clock in the morning, New York time for London. And equally effective, it could be done for the time window between seven o'clock in the morning and 10 a.m. New York time. Okay, so freedom gives you a lot of room for study. So you can go in there and mine those things I just gave you. The idea of a daily bias, uh, before I get into it, I'm going to try to do as best I can to make this a very short and concise video, but the idea of daily bias, if I could be asked what was the only question I feel is the most repeated one by email to me, whether it be uh, my students in mentorship when they first join or from people all around the world through YouTube, and when I was on Twitter, which I'm not anymore, but number one question was obviously what is the daily bias and how could I know what that daily bias is because if I could do that then I'll know how to day trade and I've always said rather facetiously but not to be a discouragement uh, that's not true because you could have the bias and you'll still do something wrong because of your infancy as a trader I'm going to give you some things that are very generic but are very powerful if you don't know them. Now, for the benefit of the new viewers here, um, some of my old followers and friends uh, will be bored with the next couple minutes, but, but it's something that's worth repeating. So I'm going to talk about the architecture of the daily range. Okay, and we're going to assume with a rather loose definition of bullish and bearishness, uh, I've taught how to determine what that is in this YouTube channel. But if you look at the idea of a market that is predisposed to go higher, and I'll cover a little bit of that in this presentation, but if we're looking at a daily range and we anticipate it being bullish, it does not need to have the open, the low, the high, and an up close for me to have a bullish bias. In other words, I don't care where that close price is. I just need to know, is it more likely to have the range expand to the upside or the downside from the opening price? Okay, so I'm going to give you some things like I just did there. If you're not writing this stuff down, it's really pointless for you to watch the video because there isn't going to be this magic download from me saying something and you instantly understand it. You need to write it down and then go into your charts and study these things, these specific characteristics, and see if I'm not telling you the very truths of the marketplace. So with the assumption that we are bullish, okay, uh, the idea that say this is the euro dollar, and this is a daily range that you anticipate being bullish for that particular day. Uh, I'll cover in a moment how those things could be derived doesn't mean it's a hundred percent my daily bias is not 100 percent if i get something initially wrong about my bias early in the day i may have something that constitutes a reversal of my analysis or i have something that completely negates the idea and i move to the sidelines so it's important to know there must be flexibility in your daily bias routine okay so also uh, daily bias generally does not flip flop back and forth bullish bullish down down bullish bullish down down bullish it doesn't do anything like that 
it's predominantly when the market is bullish we're looking for expansion on the upside so trades that allow a move from the opening price higher and not requiring the close to be higher than the open when i first started in the 90s and i started getting good at the s p and bonds i required this when i was bullish and i would usually hold to the close and that right there sometimes would sting me because it would give this real big expansion day and i would hold on to it thinking it's going to close even higher and it would basically collapse down to the opening or even below it so i learned later on that even though the bias may be bullish there is something that it's reaching for eventually and when it hits that or reaches it there's probably going to be a reversal day which was eventually the uh, the culmination of my reversal market profile but that's beyond the scope here but the architecture of the daily range the first and most important thing is if we're bullish or bearish is that opening price so the question is is what is the opening price you can go and simply use the opening price at midnight new york time okay whatever that opening price is for the market you're trading that is the opening price to me okay that that's an opening price that I could use with this idea here if I'm bullish I want to be buying near or in the best case scenario below that opening price with the expectation that I'm buying usually the low of the day or very close to it or if I miss it okay say I was a little ambitious and I had a limit order that was just beyond the scope of what the daily range reached down for for that particular day then I have to decide whether or not I'm going to participate and trade something closer to the opening price or just above it which is not like breaking a rule or anything it just means that it's better to be trading at the opening price or below it when bullish and if we're bearish we want to be trading short at or above the opening price and that's your highest probability low risk scenario there's that you can't get any better than that and if you study daily ranges when the market's bullish and study where that opening price is at midnight it doesn't happen all the time it's not an everyday bias filter like it doesn't give you an everyday thing it just means that you go into your day with that expectation that if you're bullish you want to be buying at or very near the opening price or below it so we're going to use this idea here everything i'm saying you just reverse it when it's a potential bearish scenario so the opening price is the most important okay and it's again the opening price at midnight how do you arrive at that what is the opening price on your 15 minute chart there you go so draw that out in time usually extend it out till around 11 o'clock in the morning new york time now why that time of the day it's smack dab in the middle of london close uh, london close kills in for me is 10 o'clock in the morning to noon new york time now it can go a little bit beyond noon and sometimes go into one o'clock in the afternoon but by and far and large 10 o'clock in the morning to noon New York time that's London close kill zone as I define it so if you just use the one hour mark right in between the two that's 11 o'clock draw that opening price out to that period every single day and study that go back and look at your back testing and take copious notes seriously take a a major undertaking with back testing and studying the things I'm teaching you here and also the things I've taught in this YouTube channel and you're going to find that what you're building is the world's best trading book because it's going to be important to you it's going to be salient to the things that you are concerned about as you were developing and it's going to have all the answers for you because you have found them with experience and study it's not just taking my word for it you're going to go in you're going to see it it's going to be much more meaningful to you than if you were to buy a book that i write or someone else writes and it has their examples in there there's no connection to it and you probably felt that before reading a book or you know watching someone else's videos even mine you feel this disconnect and it's because you have not had your hands on the process and that's what makes this stuff work it's not just watching a video binge watching so getting back to the opening price this price here is the opening at midnight new york time if we're bullish we don't expect a lot of price action on the downside it can but if it does go below it during the london session we're generally looking for the low of the day to form 
if, for whatever reason, there's very little movement below the opening price at midnight during London and it starts to move up, but doesn't really expand too far or doesn't move a lot in terms of pips. Now, what is that? Um, that's kind of like uh, open for interpretation. What is not moving a lot, Michael? Say it moves around uh, 30 pips, maybe 35 pips for the day and it enters New York. Generally, it could come back down and travel below the opening price during the New York session, especially if there's high impact or medium impact news. They may use that as a guise to take it down below the opening price and run the initial low of the day. And then you have what I mentioned earlier in passing, which is a market reversal profile for intraday. And then you would catch the low of the day that way. And then you would expect the range to expand on the upside. Again, not requiring that close to be higher than the opening price. So the high of the day is what we're really targeting. We're targeting that. We have to have some rule-based idea to have some realistic, solid, sound basis. <laughs> trying to find all the, uh, the uh, salient adjectives to describe what you're doing with the, uh, the high of the day. And it could be a pivot point if you'd like to use pivot points. It could be an old high if you like support and resistance uh, or an old low. You know, same thing with support and resistance. And it may be a Fibonacci level. It may be a specific uh, Fibonacci extension. It could be an intraweek high, you know, something to that effect. But you need to be aiming for something, okay? And whatever that is, it needs to be predetermined. You can't just watch price go throughout the day and say, well, I wonder where it's going to reach for. You need to know what it is. And average daily range on the last five days is another general rule of thumb where you could look for a target for the intraday. It does not mean, but I do have tools that will allow you to get to the high and low of the day, but you won't know how to do that. Even if I sit down and show you, it takes time to practice. And as you'll see in the later portions of this description and, and teaching, it's not always as easy as open, down, rally, close on the high. And this is what you're all expecting, especially those that watch all my YouTube videos. You think this is how it's always going to pan out. And then the first day you see this not form when you think it's bullish, it throws you into like a short circuit. You're like, this doesn't work. It's failing. They're changing the algorithm. You know, they're, they're going after ICT now. They're changing it because everybody knows how to do it now. That's not what's going on. You're just operating in a particular day that may require consolidation or retracement. Then this type of day will form. Okay. But again, the closing price is not that big of a deal. So on the buy days or when it's bullish and our bias is bullish, we're focusing on the open and the high. Okay. Those two things are critical. The less forgiving is the low because you don't necessarily need to be trading at the low of the day. That's the highest form of analysis. If you're bullish and you're buying the low of the day or very close to the low of the day, what is that? Within five pips. And is that reasonable? Is it realistic? Absolutely. Is it realistic for you to expect how to, that you'll do this you know, the first few times that you sit down or in the first couple months of, of learning it? No, because you're gonna be fearful. You're gonna be afraid. And you may see this opening price and it may dive down 25, 30 pips and it might do it quickly and you'll be scared. You'll be like a deer in headlights. You will second guess yourself and you won't trigger it. You won't put a limit order in because you want to get in at the market after it starts moving in your favor. And these are all the things that are normal for you to develop as a trader, but you have to go in and tackle these fearful situations and do it with a principle-based approach but you have to start with some kind of theory otherwise you're never going to understand what it is that you're fearing and how to overcome it so by desensitizing yourself by looking at the daily range watching live price not watching trading views replay function that's not the same you need to watch these candles live and breathe when they're born at the opening price Watch how they move around. And then when they expire and die on their clothes and a new candle is born after that one, you need to know what it felt like while that candle was, you know, going through its life cycle. And it doesn't matter what time frame. 
you need to see it live. That's the only way you're going to feel comfortable with trading live funds. And I'm not saying that that should be your goal here because you're going to decide that on your own. But in a demo account setting, the only way you're going to be able to find consistency in finding where to get in and where to get out and how to buy and how to hold, you know, working with a daily bias idea is that you have to go in with the expectation you're going to get it wrong a lot. And every time you get something wrong, that mistake is an opportunity to learn something mostly about yourself, what you're fearful of, and those things that you need to be recording in your journal when you do these exercises. Every single trading session is an opportunity for you to practice. Every single trading day is a lab experiment. You need to be getting in there and practicing. What is practicing? Getting it right all the time? No. You need to be practicing how you engage. If you think the market's bullish, you got to go in there and attack that opening price or something below it. What would be down there would be bullish. It could be a order block. It could be an old high finding support. It, anything that you and your method leans heavily on as a support idea or something that would be bullish if it traded to it, then, hey, you know, that, that's what you're going to be working with. For some of you that like indicators, and that sounds weird me saying that, but there are still some of you that like indicators, and that may be something down below this opening price that creates a buy signal for your indicator. Maybe it's something you created, you know, uniquely of your own study. Whatever it is, the idea is that you need to be deriving what that bias is based on whatever the high is that you're aiming for. And it's going to be rooted on something beyond that one single daily candle. And I'll talk about that next. But the close is the least of our concern. We don't care where that closing price is. Because what is the closing price? That's way into uh, you know, late New York time. I'm not trying to trade that time of day. So what's the closing price for me? Whatever the opening price is at noon. 15 minute candle. The opening price when the 15 minute candle opens during the noon hour in New York, there's your closing price. And do all your studies with that mindset. The opening price at midnight and the opening price at noon. There's your beginning and end. There's your bookends. What does price do between those specific times? If you study that, you'll see that that usually is going to be the perfect encapsulation of the lines portion of the daily range. Now you may get some kind of a little squiggly move a little earlier, you know, during the Asian session the previous day, which will be the new trading day for some of you. But I look at things from a New York time. Okay, so it, it's not a new day to me until we get into midnight New York time. Then it's a new day. And it may sound, you know, again, arrogant and self-centered as an American, but that's just how these algorithms run. They run on New York time. It, you can argue about it all you want, but everything runs on New York time. So the idea is you have to know what the architecture is of the daily range. And it's based on these four components. The opening price, most important, whether you're bullish or bearish. The high, when you're bullish, you're aiming for something. Okay, and I'll talk about that in, in a minute. The targeting of that high starts with an ideal area in the market where you're trying to buy it. Okay, some kind of a low. Now the low of the day, it's not important for you to try to get in that every single time. You've seen me do things like this in live trading and examples on this YouTube channel when I was on Twitter, but that takes a lot of experience and a lot of time. And you're gonna have to grow into that. And I don't ever sugarcoat it. But you don't need that to find an opportunity in the daily range bias. So usually what happens is between the opening price and the closing price, this part of the body of the candle, it's usually two o'clock in the morning, New York time to around 10 o'clock in the morning, New York time. So that around eight hour period of time is usually the body of the candle. That's the, the, the lines portion of the range. That in itself is a huge milestone once you study that and see it for what it is it's the truth you won't be afraid of getting into another trade opportunity if you miss your ideal entry if you understand that 
You also will grow to welcome New York session trading because New York session trading usually is somewhere above that opening price, unless it goes down and dives below the opening price and runs the initial low of the day out, like I mentioned earlier. Um, and that doesn't happen a lot. And even if that does happen and you say you get stopped out, if your bias is still bullish, you got to anticipate that as a potentially, you know, you got stopped out. You did something wrong. Don't beat yourself up about it and go in and look for another opportunity at that opening price or close to it because New York session will, will do that. If everything's remaining bullish, it will still do that. And then you can ride that expansion in the New York session into that 10 o'clock to noon hour where we close. Okay. Your candles on your platforms and on your brokerage uh, accounts, they're not going to paint the daily range like this with these time parameters. That's why you have to think about things a little differently and you have to put your daily dividers in for your perception of the daily range. That means midnight to noon, midnight to noon, midnight to noon. If you do that on an hourly chart in a 15 minute time frame, study that. Go back over the last couple months of any one of the pairs that you like to trade. You're going to see something that is a lot more clearer than if you just click the daily dividers or separation tab that uh, does the session dividers. I know some of you are still using MT4. I've transitioned to trading view, but if you put the session uh, separator in there, their separation isn't how I see the daily range. So anytime I'm referring to my students, the daily range, I'm showing that midnight to noon, midnight to noon. Okay. So that is important. So if you get beyond this in the other studies that I've done on this YouTube channel, you'll get more insights about everything that I haven't said here, but has been taught in other lessons. So what are we looking for if we're bullish and we're aiming for this high? Okay. What high price are we looking for? It's going to be a draw on liquidity. Now, what is that? Okay. It is the most important thing in trading. Why should a market go up or why should a market go down? It's going to be reaching for something. Okay. And that something is liquidity. Liquidity is just a term that's used to understand orders that are in the marketplace that are waiting to be paired up with a counterparty. And what do, what do I mean by that? If the market is likely to go higher, and that means our bias would be underlyingly bullish. That bullish bias suggests to us as a analyst that we think the daily range is going to expand over the hours I've outlined in this teaching. If it rallies up to an old high and just above it, what would be resting above that old high? Buy stops. Why would an old high have buy stops above it? Because there's traders that are short from that old price high and their orders to protect that short are buy stops. So if the market is down here and opens below that old high somewhere back here, and I'm speaking hypothetically, but you, if you've been following this channel for any length of time, you pretty much know what I'm referring to. Uh, it's going to be running for an old high. It might be old equal highs, relative equal highs, you know, or one singular swing high. And above that is going to be buy side liquidity or buy stops. So the liquidity that's being attacked is buy side liquidity. So that's the draw on price. It's going to go up there because it needs to go there. It needs to go to a level where there's going to be a exchange. Anyone that's buying down here, they have to have a way of getting out of it. So what do they have to do to get out of their long position? They have to sell it. So if they bought it, let's say perfect example, uh, we bought below the opening price at some really fancy uh, round number and we held it all day long and it ran above an old high. Those buy side liquidity orders are going to be waiting to be tripped as a market order. If the market trades there, those buy stops become market orders to buy at the marketplace which is perfect for the smart money traders that are long down here. They're looking to sell it. So they're pairing it with a, a pool of liquidity of traders that have an interest in buying at a higher price. Why? Because they've been short and they want to be out if it goes above 
their specific price level. And everyone knows trailing stop losses are a cancer on retail traders because they don't know how to effectively manage their position. So there's always going to be a plethora of buy stops above previous day's highs or below previous day's lows in the form of sell side liquidity. So as a short term day trader, you can capitalize on that and use it as your high or where you think the market's going to go. Now, let's get back to this point about the close. Just like we don't care about where the closing price is, we're not trying to forecast the closing price exactly at the opening price at noon, New York time. That's not what we're trying to do. I have things I can do that with, but that's not the scope of this teaching. And it's certainly not something I'm laying before you as a personal challenge. What you're trying to do is find something that it's going to target. And here's the, the rub. It might go beyond your target. And that's a lesson in itself. You're going to learn a whole lot about yourself if you get into a trade and you get out with a reasonable or respectable uh, pip haul. Say, say you take 100 pips out of the day. It's not likely, but let's say you did take 100 pips out of the day. But it moves 180 pips. Are you going to be mad? Sure you will. You're going to be upset. You can say, no, I would be happy with 100 pips. No, you won't. Okay. I can tell you, I don't feel that way. And I've been doing this a long time. So you're never right in this industry. You're never going to be the perfect trader. It's never going to happen. So that's why you have to determine in static terms what the high is that you're aiming for. And from where you're entering and what you're aiming for, that's your trade. You're not trying to fool yourself or your friends on social media that you're going to be able to do the whole entire range from low to high. You're not going to. Okay, so be happy and content with what you've seen as possible. Take the profit, move to the sidelines, and wait for another opportunity at another day. Don't go back in and milk the daily bias because you have extra time still after your trade's been done. That's always, that's always a bad scenario. The only time that is considered is if you took a trade in London and you got either stopped out or uh, you didn't get a a fill. So you can go back in one more time. Okay, that, that, that New York. That's the only time I look at, you know, as a second opportunity. Unless I'm going in there, you know, going crazy with a lot of scalping. And that's just, even though I can do it very well, I don't like to do it because it's, demands too much of my focus and I could do other things to do just as much as that but the draw of liquidity is where the market's likely to go so that's what you're aiming for in this case when we're bullish that's the high that's that price that we're aiming for so we're we're using the draw on liquidity that is an old high now that old high might be in the form like I said of an old low that we traded through and now it may come back up to that as an upside objective I don't personally like to look at trades like that because everybody thinks that way in retail it's support resistance and you know support broken turns resistance and sometimes but not all the time but i have tools that will do a higher range of probability than just simply looking at the classic support and resistance because you go right back to the same question i've always posed what is the support and what is the resistance because all of us are going to have a different interpretation of what that is but the way I break down the market in the specific ranges, and there's things that I teach that are PD arrays, they're very specific. And it's not left for interpretation. It's very specific things. So that high, just think of it as relative equal highs. Okay. And if that's what you're framing on a 15 minute chart or an hourly chart or four hour chart for your uh, target for the high, that's your draw on liquidity. And then once you understand that, then you're going to be utilizing institutional order flow. And we'll talk a little bit about that in our next slide. So the draw on liquidity, this is the euro dollar. And I apologize. I just took a look at the, the clock and I went a little bit beyond what I wanted to say, but I can't help myself. <laughs> I want to be, I want to present something that's valuable to you. And I'm also predicting what questions might arise. And I don't have a script outside of what I have in front of me. So again, you didn't pay for this, but you should have because it's something that you're not going to learn elsewhere unless it's someone that's learned from me and they're just trying to make a YouTube channel and 
look smart. But the idea of the draw on liquidity is rooted on a higher time frame chart. And one of the best ways you can do that is use a weekly chart. Now the weekly chart, in this case here, the Euro, we've gone from trading up here in the highs of 2018 all the way down to the March time period or so of this year in 2020. And we started to rally up from there. The range that it was working within is this high to this low. Now, right away, you know, you may not have seen anything down here that would be bullish. And we're not going to get into that. When you look at a weekly chart, the only thing you need to be worrying about is, is the next candle, like say you're looking at it on a Saturday. And on Saturday when the markets are not trading, you want to look at your weekly chart and say, okay, what is the likelihood of the next candle on the weekly chart expanding higher or expanding lower? That's the first step, folks. That's all you need to worry about initially. If you can't determine what the next weekly candle is going to reach for, then you have to sit on your hands and wait until Monday starts trading. And then usually wait until Monday's done. What is it done on Monday? Has it given you any more insight or clues as to what it's trying to reach for? If the weekly range is going to be an expansion on the upside, I'm willing to let Monday go. And in one, you know, Mondays in my trading have had sometimes really big blast off days and I missed a big portion of the weekly range. I don't care. I'm not beating myself up because I know what I do repeats. And you'll learn that too. But you won't feel that comfortable if you start by listening to the rules I give you and you see a big Monday. You're like, oh, psh, what does ICT know? <laughs> he missed that move. Yeah, I probably did. But I'm also finding two or three more really good setups in intro week that work within that same idea of the weekly range expanding on the upside or in the converse sense. Uh, when it's bearish, I could be looking for something that's going lower intra week and not requiring participation on a Monday. Okay, so what we're looking at here is a order block right here. Now I identified the high and the low so that we can clearly see it. And the high of the order block and the low of the order block that is the full range or what we're going to be using as the draw on liquidity. So before the weekly range started, and we're looking at December 18th is Friday. Yeah, 18th, uh, 2020. So at the time of this recording, uh, we only have tomorrow for the, the end of the week. And then there's no more trading. And we stop trading for the week. So we don't know what this weekly range is going to do with 100% assurity. We don't know that. So the probabilities are, is it likely to go higher or lower? And the fact that we have traded from this consolidation, we started to move out of it. And look how many weeks we've had where it's been one big range, another big range, a small little indecisive range last week. And then we have a nice big expansion on the weekly range here as it trades right up into that bearish order block. So every single one of these weeks, had opportunity even last week with the indecisiveness that the weekly range showed but here's the wonderful thing and this is where you write things down every time we move from consolidation and start to have an expansion phase you need to start considering this factor right here where is the draw on liquidity and if you get caught up in a week that is indecisive don't think that it's topping it doesn't mean that it's topping it just means that we're in another smaller period of consolidation. So what's being shown here on the weekly chart is occurring here on the four hour and the one hour of this individual weekly range right there. But when this happens and we're bullish, if we have an indecisive candle or if we have a down candle, then we have a increased probability that we're going to have a large range expansion on the upside if we are still underlyingly bullish. And the market trades right up into that bearish order block right there. Okay. So with these levels in, we're going to look at a daily chart. And we can start seeing this is the new trading session. And this is Thursday's trading, Wednesday, 
Tuesday, and Monday. So we had a week that had relatively every single day it was a buying opportunity. But not every single day had a obvious low risk buy. But the bias was what? Bullish each day. Doesn't mean bullish daily bias means every day trading. It doesn't mean a bullish bias going in every day is an every day opportunity to be a buyer or that you're plunging in. It doesn't, that's why you are losing because you're thinking that everything has to be cast in stone and it's not. It's not. And that's the hardest thing for me to beat through the barrier of a new trader in development is that they think they have to be able to know how to do this every single day. And there are, and this is probably going to be shocking to some of you, I don't know sometimes. I have to wait. And it may require me waiting through an entire London session. But then I can see what it's likely to do for the New York session. Or I may see something in London, go in, lose, and think I got it figured out in New York and then lose again. And then I have to stop because I have misread it and I am wrong. I don't want to go in there and throw good money after bad just to know that I'm really, really wrong. <laughs> so that's the reason why we have to have rules. Okay, so if the rules aren't in place and we don't know what they are, then you should not be surprised when the results are lackluster or less than stellar. So we're looking only for the anticipation of the ranges to expand until we get to that red line. Okay, now the red line is just a target. It doesn't mean it's going to go there in reverse. It can, and this is what sometimes people misinterpret. They, oh, here comes the plan B. It's not plan B. That wouldn't be my trade. I would never look at that and sell short. I would look at that as a run up into that. And once it gets there, then I'm done and I move to the sidelines. But some students of mine may see that and say, okay, well, I see that as an opportunity and I could sell short that and maybe get 20 pips out of that as a short because they can get a reaction there. That's just not my cup of tea, but it might be a student of mine. So I have to be very careful how I say it because I don't want to say something that may discourage something that they have been discovering in their own studies that is framing and building their own unique trading model. So I have to be very responsible in the way I speak, not because I don't want to be wrong, not because I'm trying to avoid you know looking uh, less smart, because I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not a mental giant. I'm just the average guy that's been blessed by all this stuff, and I didn't deserve it. So when I'm teaching you, I'm teaching you the most practical way of dealing it, and I'm being honest with you. So if I tell you that this order block would be a draw on liquidity, it's because it's an area where it needs to potentially trade back up into, because I don't believe in support and resistance in the classical sense, but that up close candle in that old consolidation back, back on that weekly chart is enough for me to use as a target. Now it might trade even through that and go to 125s. Okay. That doesn't mean anything to me. It just means that what's the next likely upside objective. And I'm going to aim for that. Is there enough range? from where I could potentially try to enter at and that high that I'm aiming for. Now, for some of you, you may have looked at a lower level objective than what I outlined on that weekly chart. It may have been just a static number of pips, 30, 40, 50 pips. Is there anything wrong with that? If you're classifying that as your high? No. It could be whatever your daily range ADR is, okay, on a five day basis. Whatever the average daily range for the last five days is, and you project that up as your uh, forecasted high of the day, and you get out there, then that's it. That's your trade. If it keeps going up 150 pips more, you have to let go of that. So again, bias is not perfect daily range from low to high, and you got in on it. There, there's For some reason, the idea of bias, okay, and I think it's mainly attributed to the fact that they've seen me do many examples of getting into low, getting into high, riding it out, even adding into the daily range throughout the day in small little one minute charts and such. That's mastery. That's something that you can't just sit down in front of a chart and watch it, you know, a video of mine or even a series and just think that you can do that. And 
it happens. It doesn't work that way. It took, I mean, believe me, it took me long, long time to be able to do that. And I can't do it every single day. There's days that you just can't do it. And we're, we're about to see some of that price action. But you want to be looking for where the market's going to draw to because that's the most important thing. That's the basis of why the market's reaching for it. The markets move to go to liquidity or it goes to an area to rebalance. So there is an imbalance or an inefficiency in price action. It will go to those two primary drivers for price movement. The third is a central bank repricing. And then you have nothing that usually can forecast that. It's just, it's there and you got crushed. Okay. That's the risk. Every single time you trade these markets, you are risking a unannounced, something happens in the world, somebody dies, there's a war that breaks out, something to that effect where it's an act of God or something unexpected happens. And then the central bank prices in that move or that event, and they do so in stunning fashion. Sometimes it could be a really muted movement, like it could be a half a penny move, which is 50 pips. Or it could be several pennies move, which could be 500 to 1,000 pips. And look at the Euro and Swissy when it was depegged, and you'll see exactly what I'm referring to. That's like a very, very rare occurrence, but hey, you gotta be realistic. You know. It could have happened to you if you were in those markets and you're crushed. And that is something that you need to be mindful of. You know, just because you think you're trading on these intraday charts and you're day trading, you think you're hop skipping through the, the risk. No. As soon as you put in a trade and you're in there, live funds, you are at risk of having much more than you're comfortable with losing taken from your account. And I don't want to sugarcoat anything when I'm talking to you about that. That's why I tell you, you can't rush this. You can't think, oh, I've been doing it for the last five days, so I'm ready for live fund trading. (laughs) That's not how it works. Because as soon as you get in there with the live trading, it's going to be, oh, no, this doesn't work. So it's not that it doesn't work. It's just you're trying to do it too frequently. You're forcing it, and you're not following the rules. So the daily chart each day had a range expansion. And again, we're not trying to forecast where the closing price is. We're just looking for that expansion in one direction over another, where it's one-sidedness. That's what we're focusing on. That, to me, is bias. It's not where does the close uh, finish the day in relative terms to the opening price. That's that To me, I could care less about that because you can make a lot of pips in environments where even in this kind of mess here, you know, these indecisive candles here, there's opportunities in here to be a buyer and you can find trades in that. It's not always just down, 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 down. This In these days here, you could still have a bullish bias and get scalps. It doesn't, for a new student or a new trader that's trying to learn how to do this, when you see these down moves like that, it doesn't feel like that's possible. Like who's buying in that? A high frequency trader or a scalper, or an intraday trader. They don't have to be in going short, and just because the daily range closes lower than the opening doesn't in any way force the idea that that's the only way to make money. It just means that it provides you as the analyst and potential trader to have a framework to work within that data. That daily range, how are you going to interpret what the price action's doing on your chart, how do you see that? Is there opportunity or is there a lack of opportunity? That's all, that's all trading is. And each of us are going to have a different way of framing that where it constitutes a, in our opinion, a low risk, high probability trade. Now, if we were to compare notes and then had the benefit of hindsight, everyone could play armchair quarterback and say, yeah, that wasn't a smart idea. That's why you don't want to compare your notes. Because you're never going to get the feedback that you're hoping to get or even want. Because someone's always going to tell you, you did something wrong. You know you did something wrong if you did it wrong. You don't need someone else to tell you that. So all these things have to be part of your your daily bias, which is a routine. You do certain things and you don't do certain things. You don't talk about your ideas. You don't talk about what you did. And that's the worst thing you can do, especially if you have a winning trade. 
everybody wants to go to social media. Everybody wants to go to these chat rooms, these forums, okay, these Twitters and Instagrams, and they all want to show what they did right. And I would be more interested in seeing what you learned by doing it wrong. And you don't see that. And that's how real traders develop. A real teacher will encourage the student to delve into why they keep making the mistakes, but not beating themselves up about it. So you have to blend that in, keep that in there, because for some of you that are shaking your head, said, see, you're not teaching bias. You're talking about something else. You're talking about uh, psychology. And all that. You know, I want to talk about bias. That is a critical part because what you think is a bias is going to have a huge impact if you're right and wrong when using that said bias. And you need to understand that just simply because you think it's going to go up doesn't mean it's going to go up. Or if you think it's going to go down, it might go down, but it might, might not go to the target you're reaching for. And you hold on for it too long and it reverses on you. How's that going to make you feel? Does it mean abandon the model? Does it mean abandon the ideas that you use to get into that trade? You're going to feel like doing that. And you're going to be going into these chat rooms and forums and looking at who has a course here, who has this, who's trading good right now. I need to follow them. And it's all going to be hinged on this topic right here. Bias. I have a bias every single day. Does not mean my bias pans out to script. It just means the days of the week I think that that bias may be unfolding. For instance, I'll give you an example. I've been bullish on Euro. Tens of thousands of people know that I have been bullish on Euro. And it's trading at levels that I was pointing to before the fact. Every single day doesn't mean I'm going in there buying during London trying to capture the low of the day. I have to use the economic calendar. And I'm framing my projected bias that I've already arrived at on the weekend. So I'm looking at things on Saturday, or if I do my analysis on a Friday, um, I, whatever it is I've arrived at for bias, that is what I'm looking at every single day of the coming week. So it's a predetermined daily bias, but it's a soft analysis concept. In other words, I'm not going in there forcing that. I have to go in and see, does the market support that? And does it keep giving me clues, which is what we're going to talk about next with institutional order flow. You need to have some things in your favor, not just simply because you have a gut feeling it's going to go up. So therefore, every single day in London, I'm going to try to buy the low of the day. No, I'm looking for days that have a high impact or medium impact news event at a specific time of day, whether it be London or New York at a specific level in a currency that lines up with something I've either pointed to with my students or I have thought about in the trading that took place on Monday. Because maybe I have, even though I have a bias, it may require Monday's trading for me to feel confident to go in there trading on Tuesday and Wednesday or maybe even a Thursday. So let's go into the hourly chart. And you can see this is the hourly chart for this particular trading week for Euro. And you can see ahead of FOMC, which was occurring on 2 p.m. here on Wednesday. And prior to that, we had consolidation. You see that? Consolidation, which was that part of that larger daily consolidation phase. So it wasn't really trying to do anything yet. But this level up here was still in play. That's what we would be looking for, for what? The draw on liquidity, which is what? The high of the day that we're aiming for, which is what? What we're trying to get to after buying below the opening price or very close to it. You see how we're starting to flesh out bias? Now, again, every single day, here's Monday's trading, indecisive, okay? Here's midnight, New York time. So the opening price is down here. It doesn't really drop down until there which is later in the day. And it goes up a little bit and consolidates and it goes one more time, drops. Now in here, we have the opening price and it does drop below that. And it drops below a short-term low here. And that right there might be something to look at with a closer eye with in terms of the dollar index. 
Is there something here that shows there's a reason to be anticipating this as a buy? I'll leave that for your study. But then the market goes in consolidation again. And then the next day, on the day of FOMC, we have the opening price. It drops down initially and it rallies big. You see that? But then what happens? As we get closer and closer to the FOMC, when FOMC comes out, they use that as a catalyst to drive down below sell side liquidity. But they leave these here. Okay, you see that? Not every relative equal low is ripe for the taking. So it's important you understand that. Just simply because you see these relative equal lows, and a lot of folks are really warming up to that idea, and they're making courses now around it. But this isn't always the reason. You have to have a narrative. And the narrative is, we've already shown a willingness to go higher, and this run down here is just to upset anyone that's already long so they don't get a chance to participate in the upside after FMC comes out. So when you see this move down here, as a developing student or a neophyte trader, you'll be looking at that and be afraid and you'll cancel many times or abandon your bias. I don't and my students don't. We don't do that. We, un we anticipate this as likely manipulation. The narrative is the market's consolidating. They have a willingness to go higher, but they're coming back down to knock out individuals that were already a participant buying in here and they they are on the market's correct side now but they want to knock them out that's why the algorithm does that okay this is not a whole bunch of people selling it's not a whole group of buyers no longer interested in buying so therefore then the market drops down this is all engineered that's the part that gets under people's skin because they don't like the sound of that they like to trust their buying and selling pressure ideas and buying and uh, you know supply and demand factors uh, the forex is not based on that it's all 100 percent controlled and i know somebody's hearing that and they're saying oh this guy's full of it i'm going to turn the video off good day <laughs> doesn't change anything it's still true and you don't have to believe it but i'm challenging you to go in and look at the things i teach and you'll come away really quickly saying yeah there's there's absolutely no way that this isn't controlled and it's engineered so when they take the liquidity out and those traders that are now long get knocked out, they're not going to want to go back in when it starts to go up. They're going to be afraid. Why? Because they refer back to that bias that they had has caused a painful event. They got stopped out. So like a deer in headlights, they're going to watch that Mack truck come right at them. And if you've ever traded with live funds, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You have had this happen to you, maybe not on FOMC, but other instances where you got stopped out and you're afraid to get back in, even though you have an idea that the market might want to go, go up or go lower. Once you get stopped out, how are you in terms of trusting your initial analysis? Because that's a sign of maturity. It doesn't mean that you're a gambler and you're trying to force a trade. This is something that we anticipate knowing the things that I teach. So when we see this, we knew on the economic calendar last week that FOMC was coming. And we know that FOMC generally causes an upset in the marketplace. It's many times like a non-farm payroll. So when non-farm payroll Fridays come, we anticipate some wonky price action. But it's beneficial to know what it is because many times it sets the stage for the opposite direction of what we see on non-farm payroll that's why daily bias is really not important on that day. But I like it to, to use it as kind of like a Judas swing for the month. So while we don't generally like to trade during or ahead of FOMC, we get the information that it provides us. And trading down here, it went to a level and into an area where we have already mapped out. And I know that sounds like I'm dangling a carrot, okay? But I like to do this to reward the people that are, under my wing that are studying okay in the mentorship they know what that did okay if you can't be a part of mentorship it's not something to feel bad about all i'm saying is it's an encouragement for them just like i'm encouraging all of you that are not ever going to be in the mentorship this lesson's for you this stuff is for you i'm doing it for free 
I'm giving you my time. So you can't be upset when I'm also here giving my private group a little nudge and saying, see, the things that I talk about here are not going to be the same depth of what I teach in mentorship. But it doesn't mean the things that I'm teaching here are any less valuable because they are. But you're not entitled to have what they have because they paid the price to get there. But you're not entitled for me to do these lessons for you either. But yet I do it because I love it. So don't look at this and send me hate mail, okay, and say you're, you're selling your mentorship because honestly, I've taken the video down because we got too many of them. I'm not saying we won't give it another opportunity, but we got slammed. And I'm afraid I'm going to take more people than we can handle. But this action in here, it went back, back down into an area where we had already outlined. And when my students see that, or when you see it trade up to the order block, which is something and something that you understand by the YouTube channel content, you know what an order block is. So it's trading back up to that level as a target. Again, some of you may see that as an objective to go short. I don't see that personally, but you might, and that may, that may be your model. But when we look at the price action after it creates this manipulation, we look at this right here, institutional order flow. Now notice how every single day it's been consolidation, little a little weird in terms of its delivery. It's been consolidating. And we get this first pump up here. Then it drives down. Okay. What did it do there? It took buy stops out initially, then ran for the sell stops. Right here is one of those moments when you want to write down in your notes because if you do not do this, you are missing out on the golden teaching of this lesson. What's the bias? I told you, bullish, okay? If it's been bullish and we see a consolidation and it runs what side of the marketplace first? The buy side. So it's doing what? Taking those traders out that were short, they're stopped out. It's taking traders in that wanna buy on a breakout and then attacking what? Their sell stop. So what is the narrative here? consolidation with underlying bullish bias. FOMC is the high impact news event for Euro for the week. The market breaks out of the consolidation, takes buy side out, trips traders long, then attacks them. If it does this on FOMC, or if it does something like this at any medium or high impact news event, you have a trade. You can be a buyer down here, or you wait for any type of small little retracement as it starts to move back up. Right in here, small little retracement in here. As it's pulling back, remember, this line should be on your chart, or at least in your notes saying, okay, this is where I'm aiming for. So anytime you have down candles, think about this right here, institutional order flow. If you're bullish, and we had some type of manipulation, a stop run, the market is now allowed to move higher and reprice higher. It won't always give you a run, optimal trade entry, buy more, run, optimal trade entry, buy more. It won't do that. When we're close to a higher time frame, higher time frame target in this case, uh, you're going to see less pullbacks because it's just going to keep repricing until it gets to the objective. And again, I'm not trying to frame the idea that this is the high or top in the marketplace for Euro. I'm just saying that this is something that would finish the idea for me for the week. And I wouldn't try to do anything on a Friday to trade, let's put it that way. Now, if this was trading here on Wednesday and say this was like Wednesday, New York, I would still look to see if it had more room to go up for the week, but I wouldn't be so overwhelmingly, you know, bullish to allow more risk or I wouldn't use my maximum risk. I would use one quarter of what I would normally risk because of the time element. You think it's a cut and dry, easy bias is this or that. And that's why I tell everyone that I can give you ideas to give you bias, but you're going to fail on something else. And that's why these videos, which I go into with well-meaning 
you know, trying to make them short and concise because I get a lot of people that are impatient or new and they think that just tell me, get to the point. And this whole video is the point. <laughs> there, these are all millionaire making concepts, helping you understand bias. I'm showing you how you're going to fail using ideas that you can learn from this YouTube channel. And I did not mess up saying that because everyone thinks like at the beginning slide on this presentation, everyone thinks that if you're bullish, it should be open down buy, up close and close on the high. And it isn't going to always be like that. The market structure that's in play, which is what we have been contending with all through here is all on a larger term consolidation on a higher time frame on the daily chart. So in the hourly, you can really see it's clearly defined as a consolidation. And then you have this. And so it shows you that, yes, it's time. What's the time for? It's going to run higher. But what is it doing? It takes the retail traders short out and puts them in long, then raids them. So what, who's in the marketplace now? No one. Not retail. Now, I'm not saying that some of you are going to be like, oh, I was in this trade. What are you talking about? What I'm saying is this event here takes into account near-term liquidity. So the open float above these highs here, they attack that for two reasons. Neutralize shorts, engineer new entries on a breakout with buy stops. So traders that want to buy when it breaks above here, because they may have a bullish bias too. And if it goes up here, they think it's going to keep on going. Well... The algorithm has something for them too. It runs up, puts the shorts out, and puts the longs in, then attacks them. Why does it do that? Think about it. Why would it want to do that? Well, I'm trying not to personify the algorithm, but the logic behind it is the shorts is not going to make any money. Okay? Shorts aren't going to make any money. So that's just the, they're just a casualty of war. The buy side liquidity, they want to set what in motion? They want to put traders in long. Why? Because that's going to engineer new sellers below the market at this time. So where are they going to look for that? Below here. So what's going to be below here? Once this move happened, sell side liquidity is going to immediately enter the marketplace where it wasn't there before. Because it ran out, it took the buy side liquidity out here. Now, once it does that, the algorithm is designed to go back down here because of the, the mindset of traders. They're going to be buying all this. They're going to chase it. And when you buy something, how do you protect that position? You put a sell stop in. Okay, so where's the sell stop going to go? Right below here. Okay, great. When the market trades down there, what does that facilitate for the smart money trader? they can buy those sell stops. So those sellers are being paired up with more informed traders. So they're buying at the low of the day during FOMC, scooping up that and rallying up. And notice how every time we have down close candles, like all this is one, two, three down close candles consecutively. So what happens is the market trades above it here and then works back down into it. That's working in an order block. So this is a buying opportunity. Rallies up. Here's a down close candle right there. It's small, but what would you expect after the down close candle? Range expansion on the upside. Down close candles, range expansion. Down close candle, range expansion. Down close candle, range expansion. Down close candle, up candle. Down close candle, up candle. And now we're at the objective of the order block. That's institutional order flow. In instances where you're bullish, okay? Anytime you see a down close candle, that's an opportunity to get ready because we're going to see another range expansion on the upside. That's institutional order flow. Now that's not everything about institutional order flow, but it's how you watch the tape. You don't look at down moves and grow disenchanted or impatient thinking I'm wrong or second guess yourself. You anticipate the next drive higher in the candles that form after these close on the downside, like these little down black candles, the next candles in my chart should be green. And every time you start seeing that, okay, it's confirming that you're on side. That means you're on the right side of the marketplace. 
Do not be fearful of down-close candles or consolidation. That's the normal ebb and flow of the marketplace. But you need to see this live and you can't just watch it on the replay button of TradingView. It doesn't communicate the same way. Moving on to the 15 minute time frame to close this up. You can see again, nice clean levels. Punches down on FOMC, rallies back up, trades back down into the order block relative to the hourly chart. You see that here. Rallies up again, trades back down into what? This down close candle, which is a bullish order block there. Rallies up, down close candles, green. Down close candles, green. A little bit of consolidation in here. And then another leg up each time, but every single time you see down close candles, you as a retail trader or a neophyte, that is normal for you to feel that way. You want every candle to be going in your direction as a new trader. And you don't like the uncomfortable feeling of when it's pausing or having a little bit of retracement. You lose your mind over that. And I used to do the same thing because I was over leveraging. I was doing crazy stuff with little accounts. When I first began, I had no idea what I was doing. I had no stop loss on. It was madness. The only way you're going to learn how to trust daily bias and know when it's favorable is by understanding the economic calendar, market structure, and understanding institutional order flow. The institutional order flow is the last thing in this list, but this right here is assuming that you know what this is, the draw on liquidity. And that's assuming you know how to find the high when you're bullish. And knowing that you're going to be buying at or just below the opening price or near it in New York. And that's going to give you the architecture of the daily range that you can trust. But you will not do it right away. And you have to go through months and months of drills and practicing. And over time, you will pick up on little subtle characteristics of the things I've already taught in this YouTube channel. And in this lesson here, it'll start making more sense to you and you won't fear it. See, that's what you're, you're fearful of. You're fearful of getting it wrong. See, what you are asking me is, Michael, teach me the secret so that way I know when the daily bias is right and avoid the times when, I'm, when it's going to be wrong. And I don't have that 100% accuracy. I don't have that. I'm in the 90s, but that's still relying on a great deal of experience. I don't go in there every single day trying to do something. I mean, I can, and I'm going to lose. Eventually, if I do that, I'm going to lose more than I am willing to lose. But when you're practicing and learning how to do this, you need to invite the losses and don't be fearful of it. And it sounds counterproductive. It's, it's counterintuitive to you to hear that saying, hey, look, you know, go in there and welcome being wrong because it doesn't make any sense to you. You want to be doing this right away perfectly and making money. And daily bias can't be derived without going through growing pains. There is not a teacher, there's not a mentor, there's not a trader educator guy out there or gal that's going to sit down with you and say, here's what you do, 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 and follow this recipe and you won't have any growing pains and it's going to be easy, you're going to make money right away. Just go in here and start with a live account. Because that's what you think is available and some of you think that's going to happen with me. And I'm telling you, and I've said it many times in other videos, I don't do that. I'm teaching you exactly what you need to know and how to get it. But you you want a shortcut. You want to get around the work of it and just, oh, I know how to do it because I watched the video. Man, I wish it was like that. I wish it was. I really wish it was. But it's not. Everything is a, a process. And because there's so many factors in this, and it's the world's most difficult puzzle you're dealing with the banks all around the world and these people are extremely greedy and they don't want you in their playground. You're not supposed to be here. So as a reminder, just letting you know, daily bias is possible, but daily bias is not everyday bias. Not in the sense that it's going to pan out every single day the same way you want it to. But if you are looking at a higher time frame chart and you're trying to predict 
the more upside or the more downside on the, on the weekly range that's about to perform, if you spend time with trying to do that and sometimes even submitting to Monday's trading and let Monday tell you what it's likely to do, and go in here and start looking for 15-minute chart highs and lows and hourly highs and lows, and you'll see what it's going to most likely run to. And does that fit your expectation for the weekly range? Is it likely to expand up? And then when Monday's trading happens, does it still leave equal highs? Well, it might be running those on Tuesday and Wednesday. So what would that be suggesting to you? That your idea about that weekly range expanding on the upside and your bias for being a bullish trader, that might be something you could be uh, probing on Tuesday and Wednesday of that particular week, especially if there's a high impact or medium impact news driver thrown in London session and or the New York session. So you're blending time and price and you're also incorporating the narrative idea. You have to have an idea why these markets should be going where they're going. And when you blend all these things together, then you'll have a clear picture. May not be high resolution in the beginning because you're developing, but eventually over time, you'll have 4K resolution on the days that it matters. It's not an everyday bias. Even though you have a preconceived idea what the bias should be, you may go into the marketplace and see something that completely negates that whole idea. And you have to be flexible with that. Remember I mentioned that earlier in the video. What does that mean? Not being mad that it didn't give you a setup or if you missed it, you're not mad about that. Or if you tried something and you got stopped out and you were wrong, you don't get mad about that either. And you don't necessarily abandon the bias. If you take a long and you were expecting a big range on the upside and it creates a down day and stops you out, should you abandon that bias? No, because as I mentioned earlier in the video, if you have a down day when it's underlyingly bullish, many times right after that down candle in a daily chart, you have a really big upside day or a series of up days. So try not to just throw out the idea that if you get it wrong, that your bias is wrong. That's why it's important to be focusing on these higher time frame charts and getting a feel for what they're reaching for. And if you operate in that context, you're going to find that it's not as hard as you think it is right now. But all these things I've given to you here are not trying to complicate bias, but I'm just trying to show you all the facts. And these aren't all of them, but there's other factors that lead to understanding when the bias is bullish or bearish and for that very day and the key is understanding that calendar and market structure and if you understand those and you can see what you're looking for for the next draw on liquidity you can see that there's several ingredients that's necessary for that recipe to deliver bias at least a meaningful and quote unquote profitable bias so hopefully you got something out of this and I'm sure it made all kinds of new questions in your mind. Maybe I bored you. Maybe I've completely confused you to the point where you don't even think it's possible now. <laughs> and I can tell you if that's happened, you're, you're a new student and that's normal. It's absolutely normal for, for you to feel that way. So take notes, watch it a couple times and go into your charts and you'll see what I'm talking about is there. And it's not just once in a while. It's there a lot. And when you see these things come together, you'll know how it is that I'm able to, and my group is able to, to go in and see the market and say, okay, it's likely to go up this day, or it's going to be bullish this week or bearish this week. It's going to be reaching for this particular target. And then once you have that framework, if you have a setup like optimal trade entry, or if you like to trade bullish order blocks or bearish order blocks, or like breakers, okay, if you like my ICT breaker, that pattern is what you would go in here and, and hunt. And that's your that's your model and you just apply some kind of a, a money management idea to it and there it is so this was my short rendition this could have easily been a four-hour video and uh <laughs> I, I every time i say i'm going to do a short video it, it always goes a little bit longer than i want it to but uh, i would have loved to have had the information i've given you here tonight when i first started um i was extremely interested in going through charts all the time uh, i worked my rear end off studying and looking at data and completely becoming an animal like a savage with looking at price action and, and running scenarios running uh, 
system tests. You know, I had TradeStation and uh, Supercharts and Metastock in my earlier years, and I did a lot of computations and programming and things. And I can tell you, all of that stuff, while it was fun to do, it's, it's not as good as just simply taking a chart, using logic like I just gave you here, and going through by hand manually. And it feels like there's no way I should be doing that I see with technology the way it is. But I promise you, if you do it that way, you're going to get closer to the marketplace because it's going to be meaningful to you. You're going to write your own annotations on the chart. You're not having some kind of number cruncher. You know, I know there's quants in my audience and, and, and student group. And while they're brilliant people, there's certain advantages to being in here and handling the data manually. And then it will give you an insight that you can use if you want to be programming some of these things. It'll give you some insight to how you can bridge that. Because it's not always simply, well, I'm going to buy a down close candle because it's a bullish order block. There's things that have to be in play. And not everything can be programmed. There has to be filters. And not every filter can be programmed. And I know that because I am a computer programmer at heart. I was making my own programs when I was in sixth grade. So anyway, um, I think I've given you a lot tonight for Daily Bias. I've shown you when it's operable and it's not the classic open low of the day and close on the high when it's a bullish scenario, despite being and having had a bullish scenario and bias for uh, Euro. And this is what we are sometimes contending with. And you either have to submit to that and say, okay, nothing's broken, no harm, no foul, or know where to get in and operate in that context. And then you will be a master of bias. You'll know what it is that you're going to do, when you're going to do it, and why you're doing it. And that's important. But it isn't always a one shot, here's a video, and this is how you know when it's going to be a bullish or bearish day. It's, it's very frustrating for me as an educator to to talk about this one particular topic and I know it feels like I'm holding something back but I gave you some things that I teach in mentorship even in this lesson I didn't draw any special light to it but it's here and if you do the work and go through your charts and see it you're gonna see price differently than you did prior to watching this video and you're also going to respect the days that aren't that classic buy day as I've outlined in the first slide of this video, where the daily range is that open high low close bar and it's just a perfect up day. That's classic. Not every day is a classic day. So you're going to be met with these types of scenarios. And, and for your notes, we are in a time of the year when this is kind of like what you expect. You know, a lot of consolidation. Everybody's trying not to take new risks because the money they've made all their, this whole year, they're not really trying to move around too much. And the banks know that. So they're not going to try to be repricing aggressively. Now, we do have things in the States that are being challenged. And I'm not going to say anything more than that. <laughs> but that could potentially cause some kind of event where the markets can reprice aggressively. And that's why I've warned. Uh, normally, I wouldn't have any expectation of something like that happening. But because of the circumstances that we have here in the United States at present for the last month or so, we could have something that would draw more volatility in that would normally not be present this time of year. So this time of year, from a seasonal standpoint, it's usually quiet. Things get real, real quiet. And the daily ranges tend to be really lackluster. So it usually carries over into most of January. And I usually start my own trading in February of the, the following year. Um, I used to do the second week of January. I would start trading it then. Um, and then I just grew into just letting them have the entire month of January. And uh, once February usually starts, it's usually uh, very easy for me to go in there and get in sync with the marketplace. So uh, I, that's, I just want to toss that in there with an extra charge. <laughs> And I'm not sure when I'm going to do another video. I'm not certain I'm going to be able to put one up before Christmas. So I'm going to take this opportunity to extend a very warm and heartfelt Merry Christmas. 
and I know 2020 has been a very challenging year. If you have had trouble this year trading, if you had trouble with your analysis, I have been on record several times. This year has been the hardest year, except for my first year, which is everybody's the hardest year. But I didn't really know what I was doing back then. But I know what I'm doing now. And I have been very candid with my own group. And a few times I've talked about it on YouTube. This year has been very, very hard. Usually it's very easy for me to get in and find all kinds of setups, but because of all of the, the, the things that we had to deal with globally, and you know what I'm talking about, um, it's a learning experience and Brexit was another learning experience for me. And I'm still learning from that as well. So you're never 100% um, master of everything. You just master yourself and you master your unique model and Daily bias is just one component. It's not the answer. So don't feel that you need to send me an email in the future and or even after this one and say, well, if you teach me bias, I still think it's gonna because it's not. That's not the that's not the silver bullet. That's not the the magic formula, okay, or ingredient for this recipe of uh, being consistently profitable. You you can actually go in with a bias that would be against what I just outlined here and still find trades that are profitable. <gasps> What did you say? <laughs> yeah. There, look, I, I'm not teaching the only ways to skin a cat. There's lots of people out there that trade opposed to what I do and still can find profitability. I'm just showing you how the market's really repriced and how you can operate in that with no real stress. Doesn't mean you're not going to have losses. You will. But don't think that the things I've outlined here are the only way of doing it because it's not. You can do things that would be contrary to what I just said here. And again, as a new student or a new trader, that just completely short-circuited you. Like, what did you just say? Then how could it be true? That's the beautiful thing about trading. There's room on both sides, but you have to know why you're doing it and how long you're going to do it for. Everything is scalable. And just because the bias may be bullish doesn't mean someone that has an ideal scenario that could be a short seller doesn't mean they can't look at these environments where they may be aware that it may be bullish, but they also know how to get some kind of a climax short-term reversal, and that's their scalp. That's their trade. That's their bread and butter. And even though they may feel that it's underlyingly bullish, their niche is, I'm going to capitalize on that little short surgical strike where it just pulls back because it doesn't fit their personality to go in sync with it despite it being obvious to them they know it because i have people in my group that's like this and if we were all sitting in a group we would be like are you drunk <laughs> why would you think that way and i get it i get it but other students wouldn't and it would make them second guess their own model so if you have something that works for you the best thing in the world for you to do is keep it to yourself just keep it to yourself because you're never going to hear what you want other people to tell you. And so many of you want to be right on your daily bias so that way you can start telling everybody how well you're doing. And first of all, no one's going to believe that you're doing it. Okay. Period. Um, no one's going to believe that you're consistent with it. Even if you show them statements, even if you give them a MyFX book, they're going to say somebody's rigging the system. The fact that you know it's real and then someone else says to you that it isn't, it's going to get under your skin. And it's going to be like, oh, I need to, you know, I need to prove something to them. And then you're going to start doing something outside your model, doing things to push the issue. And then when you do it wrong and you do lose money, you're going to be regretful even more because you can't tell them you just lost trying to prove them wrong. So now you're sitting in quiet silence to yourself sulking because you did something emotionally. You know who you are. <laughs> you're, you're nodding your head right now. Yeah, I know. That's, that's probably what I would be doing. It is. It's exactly what you'd be doing. I know because I used to do that as a young man. So I've done all this stuff before, folks. It's not because I'm acting smart. I, I have the scars from all this. But daily bias is just one piece. And you have to have other points of information to justify and qualify, really, the idea of it being a bullish or bearish scenario and just because it's bullish and bearish by your definition doesn't mean that the market's going to deliver 
tomorrow like you want it to. And how you interpret this going forward and how you are flexible or inflexible is going to basically frame your next few months, if not your entire ending of your career. Because some of you will just simply say, I can't do this. And there's no shame in that because it's very, very hard. But everyone that has a strong, passionate desire to do this and has committed in their heart that they're never going to quit, they get here eventually. All different times, all different measures of of length of time involved. In, and it's not going to be the same for each one of you. And how much time will it take for me to know my bias? You know, how long is it going to be until I know my unique trading model? I don't know. I'm honest when I tell you, I don't know. I do still have 2016 that started in August of 2016. I still have students from that group. There isn't a lot, but I still have a few of them that simply still don't know how they're going to find their own unique model. They just rely on what I say is going to happen in the marketplace, you know, pointing here, pointing there, and they just study still. Is that normal? Yes. Is it getting close to the end when they should be, you know, getting closer to their model. I think they should, but I'm realistic. I don't know what they're contending with. I know most of them are trying to look for perfection, which is why I've talked a lot about that in this topic, because those same individuals from my 2016 group still choke on this topic because they want daily bias to be cut and dry, black and white, binary. It's this or it's that. And therefore, every day should be easy going. It's not like that. And you have to blend certain things and wait for more information, more data, more manipulation that comes by way of the economic calendar. And then those opportunities will materialize. But just simply going in and saying, okay, I'm going to be a buyer today. I'm going to be a seller today. And it's going to be just simply cakewalk. (laughs) Man, if it was that easy everybody would be trading it would be no skill required but there's a lot of things that you're going to be doing that you have to wrestle with it's going to tell you your bias is wrong your bias is wrong your bias is wrong that's what it's going to feel like in the beginning as you're learning and you have to tell that voice in your head shut up just listen to what i've already outlined I believe I'm looking for a buy. And if you're looking for a buy and you have sound logic behind what it is that constitutes a buy signal, it's either going to be there or it's not. And if you do take it and it stops you out, does it change your bias? You have to have rules in place to tell you, okay, this was just me getting stopped out. I'm still sticking with the bias. That's maturity. That's not gambling. That's not stubbornness as a gambler. That is sticking to your model and then using less risk on the next trade. Well, I need to make all of that and and a a bigger profit, Michael. That doesn't make any sense. Why do I want to drop my risk? I just took a loss. Yeah. And you're probably going to take another one because you're probably in revenge mode and you're probably going to get into it faster than you should have. And you're probably going to be trading with more than you should have and possibly more leverage than you use on the first one because you heard Martingale (laughs) <laughs> you know where I'm going with that. Take a loss, risk more than the next one. Take a loss, risk more than that one. And you'll get it all back on the next trade. That's, man, you'll lose your account like that. How do I know? Oh, I blew a couple accounts like that when I first started. In the 90s, I did all kinds of stuff. But I can tell you what I give you in this video here in concert with the things I've already talked and taught in this YouTube channel this is the real nuts and bolts to daily bias it really is and if you work with this and you take your time and you use your own experience building it out fleshing it out you will find that there'll be a day when you sit in front of charts and it'll just it'll click you're like oh i don't have to worry about it these days But these are the days particularly that I have to be expecting the daily bias to be impactful. That's that moment. That's that aha moment. I don't know how to tell you outside of what I've already taught you here and in other videos, but when you see it and you understand it and you're like, oh, 
I was forcing stuff. I really was trying to make things, you know, conform to my will. It, you know, it doesn't feel like it's what's going on right now, but that's exactly what you're doing because that's exactly what everybody does. I did the same stuff when I was coming up. You keep pushing and telling yourself it needs to be this way. It has to be. If I don't get it right this time, I'm quitting. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. You're not quitting. You're just going to be mad. Okay. And that's what's going to happen. But you're going to have to submit to this. The longer it takes for you to submit to it, the longer it's going to be for you to learn. If you're stubborn and you're trying to be willful and say, I'm going to do it this way because I'm committing to bullish bias. I think it's going to be bullish every day this week. And this is what's going to be. I'm going to be buying. Okay. But you have to be mature and flexible because when it doesn't pan out it doesn't mean that this logic is flawed it just means that you went into a day where you think you didn't need an umbrella and it rained what are you going to do about it well I can tell you one thing you're going to get wet you're going to die no it's going to be inconvenient Sure it would be, but it's not the end of your life. It's not the end of your career if you got wet. Some of you are going to take a bath. You're going to do things and test it. I mean, right last 20 times, I feel like I got it figured out. I'm going to go in there with 5% risk because, man, if I could make 5% risk on this $100 account, I mean, I could make, what, $2,000 in a couple months? What, you think I didn't know you did that kind of stuff? <laughs> Come on now. Everybody thinks that way. As soon as you get your calculator out, you start thinking, okay, I get the daily bias right. Say I get the daily bias right just three times a week. I can be wrong two times. Yeah, right. As soon as you're wrong that week, the first time, and you're new, the rest of your week is shot. You're going to do everything wrong, but it's going to feel like you're doing everything right to try to get that money back. That's why you don't trade with live funds until you know what you're doing. Trading with a demo account, six months consistently, no care in the world what the outcome of the trade is going to be. Not because it's not real money, not because you don't care. You're indifferent to it. That's when bias is going to be easy for you. When you know that it should be a buy for you, but you really don't care. You're indifferent to it. You're indifferent to the outcome. Then you're ready for what? The next step. And I'm not sure what that means for you personally. That's a choice that you all make. But you got to have rules and you have to know what you're looking for. And you have to know when to take information in and also how to filter it. A losing trade doesn't mean bias is wrong. And some of you aren't prepared to hear that. And that's why you have to watch videos like this one a few times after you've gone through some more charts, come back to this one. And then you'll hear me say something that you didn't fully understand until you had some experience looking at things like this. And then, oh yeah, now I know. I, I can see more of what he was saying. And it feels like I gave you a different video. Like I updated the video and I haven't. The, the, the bandwidth's the same from the first time you watched it. But you're just not able to see it because you have these ideas. Like right now, I've been talking way too long in your eyes. But in my eyes, I haven't talked enough yet. Because I know the questions that are popping up. I know the arm wrestling that you're having internally. I know the things that you're struggling with. I know the things that you're saying are paramount that aren't paramount. And I'm bringing to light the things that are more paramount that you aren't even aware that you should be thinking or concerned about. I'm teaching you what pitfalls you're going to have if you do things or if you don't do certain things. That's why I talk a lot. I know this stuff like the back of my hand and I know what human nature is going to do because I've taught lots of people and it's the same questions. It's the same struggling points. It's the same things. And what's difficult for me as a mentor is I can't always get the individuals that are hanging out there on the fringe that have just no willingness to just stop doing what they're doing and just be flexible. They don't want to be flexible. They, their hold to bias has to be black and white. It's binary. It's yes or no. It's on or off. And it's not that way. It's just a probability. 
It's simple as that. And how can you reduce it to where you're not struggling? Well, you can look at at least a year's worth of data on a stock, look on a commodity, look at a couple different Forex pairs, and look at an index like a S&P 500, and really tackle each individual day for each one of them for a full year. Count how many times that the market goes up and down and what days of the week it does. Because honestly, folks, that's what I did to learn all this. You think that someone sat down and pointed this, pointed that. That didn't happen like that. That's not how this happened for me. I went through hundreds and hundreds of charts every single week. And that was my life. And I gave up everything for it. So if I'm telling you, as someone that can do this very well, I'm not 100%. But I can tell you there is no easy way. There is no shortcut. There is no magic bullet. You got to go in here and submit to it and see it for what it is. And once you identify, oh, it's not perfect, but man, is this thing accurate? And then you got it. That's all you need. You only need one day of the week where you think the bias is right. How do you do that? I've already taught you the economic calendar. You wait for market structure to get in alignment with that manipulation, and then you have the setup. That's your trade, that's your setup. Anything else around that would be scalps for the week. But your bread and butter setup for that week is gonna always gonna be coupled with market structure and the economic calendar for that particular market that has the news event around it. That's daily bias. It's that day's bias. See how I did that? It's not every single day it's going to be an up day. No. It could. But I'm only focusing in on the days that are cherry. And that's why it looks like I'm cherry picking my trades. He only shows his winning trades. <laughs> look, I don't trade all the time. I only look for certain setups and certain things that I'm looking for. And that's it. You'll get it. You'll get here. But you have to take a lot of time in the beginning to do it. And don't put a time limit on it. Don't put a deadline on your success. Don't say, I have to have it by this time. Because as soon as you start thinking that way, it's not going to work. It's going to be at least double from what you said it's going to be. If you say, I have to have it by this. No, you don't. And to prove that you don't, it's going to show you it takes twice as long. And But are you going to have the fortitude to stay with this most people don't they realize this is way much more than they thought it was going to be in terms of study work discipline look around the world right now people are not patient they're not mature they're not principle oriented they're not dedicated and discipline is completely out the window and this generation that's coming up right now, they have the most difficult task of finding themselves in the world that we have now and in this industry. You have so many disadvantages. And that's why I talk the way I talk. Because some of you need a father. And guess what? Daddy's home. And you may not like the things I say. But these things are rooted in real experience. And when you listen and you submit to the ideas, you'll get the progress that you're looking for. But if you try to reinvent the wheel and want to send me emails, yeah, hey, I did this, and I did this, and I did this. And then all of a sudden, two, three months later, you start sending me an email saying, I wish I would have listened. Why? You just added three more months to your development that you didn't need because of stubbornness. I get it. Not everybody's going to believe me. Not everybody's going to have the willingness to sit down and put these things to task. I understand that. 
I've been hidden in plain, in plain sight on this YouTube platform for years. And some of you just found me and you're like, man, I can't believe this stuff's out here for free. Right. Because most people that find me don't want to share this information. But I'm sitting here. And you'd be surprised who's in my fold. All kinds of people. <laughs> okay. So if it wasn't working, if it wasn't real, believe me, nobody would be here trying to learn it. Or they wouldn't be out there trying to rip it off and replicate it and Im imitate it. And they can't. Get yourself a journal. You can do it electronically or you can do it with hand. But you want to be able to start capturing an everyday study of bias. And you want to have a record of what you think the bias is going to be for the coming week. And when you do this, you, what you're saying is the largest magnitude of movement in price is going to be predominantly more to the upside or more to the downside. That's how you want to classify initially when you're learning how to do bias. You want to set the tone with the weekly range that the majority of the pips will be seen on an up move or a down move. Okay. You're not trying to forecast the closing price. And then what you're going to do is you're going to record every single day on a 15 minute chart, a chart with your own annotations, what time of the day it made the low, what time of the day it made a high of the day and how it worked from the opening and of this architecture right here relative to it being bullish or bearish. And you do that and you don't ever stop doing it until you know what your bias is going to be and you know how to operate in it. So there you go. How long do I, how do I know when I can determine bias when you no longer have to do that because you know what you're looking for. It teaches you that that's the drills. That's the things that you have to beat into your subconscious and you'll see things that you don't, understand me talking about right now but when you do see it and you go back to these old videos you're like he's been saying this stuff this this whole time and i just had this mental block i couldn't see it and then all of a sudden there's like the 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 cataracts come off your eyes and you can see it it sounds silly like that but it's exactly how it, it is for everyone i've been saying the same things all this time but for some reason people have these barriers that they build up and once they get knocked down because of discovery in your own studies, you will finally get it. But I cannot tell you and no one can tell you when it is that you're going to relinquish this hold on your development because you're doing it. You don't realize you're doing it, but you are. Everybody holds themselves back. Everybody. And when you finally let go and just let it happen, have fun doing this. If you're not having fun while you're developing, it's going to be longer too. Fall in love with the number crunching and the back testing. The people that do well at this are the ones that have been passionate with that side of it. You might think, oh, I'm falling in love with hindsight. No, you're falling in love with the process. And then you'll find it going forward. It's just the same stuff. You've seen it enough times. Oh, yeah, I've been here before. And then it works. Not all the time, but most of the time. So with that, I wish you a very pleasant holiday season. I'll do my best to, to try to do a video before the end of the year, but I'm not making any promises, okay? So please be safe. And from my family to yours, Merry Christmas.